My name's Guy Kestevan and I've been testing mountain bikes professionally for over 21 years and I am so excited to be talking about this one today. Been riding it for a few months now, known about it for longer than that. This is the best way to spend 2k if you are going to go full flat out agro enduro. Calibers brand new Sentry. So what is it about the Caliber Sentry that makes it so special? Uh, two aspects. First, the spec is absolutely outrageous for, your pr for the price. Starting off 160mm RockShox Yari RC, that's a, basically a Lyric chassis, same uh, Debonair air spring as a Lyric, and same 35mm legs, so super stiff, super reliable, really soft start on the spring stroke, and uh, a more basic uh, motion control damper, it's the RC model here. So you've got, I mean you've got a lot of low speed compression adjustment if you need it, but there's no uh, really supple or subtle top end high speed adjustment. But you can always chuck a charger damper in there if you want. It's probably going to cost you around 200, 300 pounds, if depending on where you get it serviced. And but there's other aftermarket dampers as well. There's fast, uh, there's a push one coming out. So there's all sorts of damper options for an easy upgrade on that fork. But to be fair, even as it stands, it's a really, really good fork. Helped, I have to say, by the 2.6 inch Vigilante tire up front, 29er wheels, and these are the tough high grip carcass. So heavy duty piece of rubber uh, and not the most supple and subtle, can be a bit wooden, but loads of volume so you can run it really low pressure. Uh, if I'm honest, that would be the first thing I upgraded on this bike, but they're really, really keenly priced, especially if you're fitting them as standard uh, as a manufacturer, which is why you see WTB on a lot of bikes these days. Mounted on WTB i29 rims and a large flange hub, 32 spokes. 200 mil rotor there, and we've got Guide RE brakes, SRAM's most powerful stopper uh, for an absolute bargain price. Uh, it's basically a guide lever up here with the old code downhill caliper on the base. We'll look at that on the other side as well. Up top on the controls, we've got an 800 mil wide bar, so masses of control leverage here. We've got NX Eagle shifter on a SRAM matchmaker clamp, so loads of positional adjustment there. Like I said, Guide RE brakes, we've already covered them and a little 45 mil stem. So combine that with the short offset on the fork, you've got a really, really super stable front end because it's a 64 degree head angle, but it also feels really agile and light in your hand. It is just so well balanced, the front end of this bike. Geometry is another big massive deal on why this Sentry feels so sorted on the trail. Massive long to, uh, reach. It's a uh, 643 mil top tube on this large, which translates into a 487 mil reach. That's massive. And it's only a 460 mil seat tube, so it's not even super tall. This is a bike built to be long. Like I say, 64 degree head angle, so super slack, and a 76 degree effective seat angle. So you've got a really good climbing position. Core stealth dropper post as standard. I mean, to be fair, after a couple of months, this is starting to wobble a bit, but it's still totally functional. It's actually got a really neat uh, multi-position uh, angle and clamp adjuster there, so you can adjust the saddle angle without messing up your saddle position. Even get a uh, custom Sentry saddle, which is pretty impressive. Down here, you've got really nice CNC machined linkage, CNC machined uh, shock shuttle onto this long stroke RockShox Deluxe R shock. Super simple, but loads of stroke. It's 150 mil travel, but you've got 62.5 mil stroke. So it starts off around a 2.7 leverage ratio, bottoms out about 2.6. And the way the kinematic is set up on this four bar rear end, it starts around 100% anti-squat. So the pedaling is pretty damn good. I mean, especially with that 76 degree seat angle, the tires drag like an absolute swine. I'm not going to lie about that. Again, it's a it's a TCS tough high grip rear tire. It's only a 2.4 on the back. This Trail Boss, but it is these are not tires for speed, rolling speed, downhill or climbing. But in terms of traction, this thing just keeps gripping. If you've got the wattage and the patience, it will get up pretty much anything. Sorry, back to the suspension. You've got really neat linkage there that controls the whole kinematic. And then you've got this little shock shuttle. Uh, lots of manufacturers using that now, but as you can see, really nice, really neatly done. You know, this is not a bargain basement bike. They went through uh, several different yokes layouts on this, several different linkages, worked a lot on the kinematics, worked a lot with rock shocks on how to get the best performance out of that shock. And also, if you look up here, that is the uh, cable guide for a coil remote shock, which is what the pro version comes with. Super deluxe coil with a remote lockout 
and a Lyric uh, RSC fork, so full on enduro spec on that beast. And that bike comes with GX Eagle and a Descendant crank. On this bike, you've just got an NX crank and it's got a cartridge bottom bracket. So it's not a three piece crank, but it will take a three piece external crank. And you've got chain guide tabs in there. Eagle on the back, it's a super heavy cassette. There's a lot of weight in that, uh, but you've got that full 11 to 50 gear range uh, from this NX rear mech. And it's just been, again, NX has been totally flawless in the several months of really, really revolting weather I've thrown at this bike. And just things like the paintwork's held up really, really well. You've got a little rub patch there, you've got rub patches on here. I mean, there's a little bit of scuffing on there where I've had a lot of lights bags been sitting, like battery bags, and I should have taped that off. But, you know, you're not getting a bargain bike where the paint is flaking off all over the place. This has held up really, really well to an absolute beasting. And looking over here at the back side, we've got this really neat dropout. It's hollowed at the back, double-sided pivot again. And the Guide RE brake is hidden really neatly in behind the seat stays, so it's not going to get snagged when it's on an uplift truck. Uh, you know, everything's well protected. It's not going to get damaged when you crash. 148 mil bolted axle, as you'd expect, full boost. I mean, the main pivot bearings are fitted in clamped setups. So they're easy to replace. And they've even put a little receiver in there that's replaceable. So if you get a bit ham-fisted when you're tightening up those bolts, it's not going to ruin your frame. You just, you know, get a new little receiver there. Running a 2.4 tyre at the moment, but there's ample room for 2.6s. I've been running big Bontrager 2.6s on wider rims on this bike. No problem at all. Plenty of clearance there. You've only got the one bottle cage and that's sat underneath, which isn't, you know, the most practical place to have it for British conditions. It's pretty much just a storage keg for tools. And the lines are external. Uh, you've got the drop, again, you've got a uh, rear brake line there and there's the remote control shock line. So it's not internally rooted, but to be honest, for easy, easy servicing and for problem-free controls, external routing is probably the way to go. But just as a package, this bike is just phenomenal for the money. Like I say, 2K on the nose with your Go Outdoors discount card. And also, you know, the other thing to factor in, there are bikes that can run it relatively close on value if you go to an online distributor, but you'll actually walk into a shop, go, that's the bike I want, same day, walk out with it. You know, you're not waiting on an online order, you're not waiting on delivery schedules. This can be your bike the day you decide to have it. If you... That's the tech walk round done. I think that's pretty much covered everything off. Oh, the one thing I haven't said, uh, 445 mil chain stays, so pretty long at the rear, but that aids this stability and just the planted, sure-footed nature of this bike. It's not the most poppy or agile beast, but when you just want to smash through stuff and get away with sheer murder on the trails, this is a monster. This just has your back all the way down the raddest, fastest, gnarliest trails. That's why it's called the Sentry, because it, it was designed purely to look out for you. But this thing isn't just a Sentry, it's a whole damn riot squad. I think it's brilliant that this is a calibre and they've put together a proper full-on bike for the price. But if you're, you know, if you don't want people to uh, necessarily realise it's calibre, the logo, the Sentry wrap around there on the down tube is really, really subtle. And apart from that, all you've got is this chainsaw decal and then Sentry on the far side on the uh, offside chainstay inside. So pretty subtle. And like I say, the paint's really lasted. It's a really sweet color. It just looks a properly high class bike. But the real proof of how much work has gone into this bike is in the riding of it. So make sure you watch the live ride review, which I'll link to from here. Make sure you watch the interview with Mike where he goes through the prototype mules and get yourself onto Patreon for more behind the scenes coverage for up with just $3 a month and up. That's uh, a big help in helping me fund more videos. Just to make it clear, Canyon actually paid for this edit, so it is sponsored promotion, paid promotion, what you want, whatever you want to say, but this is a full what's and all call out, as is the live ride review. Maybe I change the tires, there's a little bit of wobble in the seat post. That's the honest truth. That's the only thing, glitches I've had with this bike. Apart from that, absolute rock solid flat out full-on enduro pinner for 2k i can't think of another bike i'd say that about right now